have for router-based setups, you'll have one machine that's a WAN type device. The tool will connect to it, set up things that need to, uh, you know, load images, uh, connect to the internet, et cetera, for your device under test. So this picture underneath is kind of how it looks. So the PC, your desktop runs a script and it drives all the devices that it wants to talk to. So you'll typically have a WAN, as I said. Um, you can have one LAN, more than one LAN, no LANs. You can have wireless on here as well. These are all like separate machines though. They're driving uh, things through the router for testing. You'll also typically want to have a, uh, a remote, re uh, remote control reset. Uh, so that way you don't have to go and, and flip switches on the board. Um, so you all saw this picture last year. That's kind of what I had before. <laughs> we had racks of these in multiple locations with boards and had a huge pool of machines I could connect to. And, and in the rack we had, you know, server class PCs that were running tons of virtual machines that were mapped through switches to connect to all the routers and all the ports on the router. Um, we even had a USB, Wi-Fi, USB is tons of Wi-Fi's plugged into them so we could test Wi-Fi as well. They were, these USBs, USB Wi-Fi's were mapped to virtual machines as well so you just would connect to them. This is what I have now. Um, the idea was to be very cost effective and cheap so um, I, I looked for a cheap switch that supported VLANs and I connected one of these ports as the uplink port to my desktop PC. Um, each one of the VLAN ports are configured to be a separate port on my machine and they're, and they're actually mapped to, uh, to Q, images running QMU. So I basically have a, a, a virtual machine running for every port on this switch on my desktop with one Ethernet port. Um, and this is kind of the functional diagram, uh, PCs with QMU instances. USB serial to the device, um, I actually had a Wemo laying around, so I added support for that because I was trying to, you know, use things that are, someone might have in their home. Uh, for those who don't know, Wemo is a remote power reset. Uh, all right, I started sending screenshots. So the nice thing about QMU is it's very well supported, it's fast. You can do other interesting things like map. PCI devices into a guest, so you could put a, a Wi-Fi card in your desktop and map it into a guest and have the guest have Wi-Fi, and that, wi that guest can drive Wi-Fi testing for your boards. There are other ways to do it well. The idea is to try to find ways to you know, enable this and make it cheap uh, for like people to set up a station on their desk like I had shown here, so. Um, so this is an example of the configuration you have to do. Uh, you're basically just describing a board and how to connect to it. So board name, board type, how you connect to it. This can be, you know, a telnet to a serial server. It can be CU or Kermit to a local port. Um, the description of how to reset the board. And, you know, this is kind of new, but there's a, a way to describe all the devices connected to it. So I'll have a Debian, an IP address, a color, and a name of, of all the devices attached to, the, to a particular board. And you don't have to have these, it's, you have to have the WAN typically if you want to load images, but you don't even have to have devices, you could just use a serial connection. Um, so this is kind of the summary, it's, uh, it's really cheap to get this running if you have an Ethernet port on your desktop, if not, uh, you can add it with another USB Ethernet. So. And you can scale this up as well. So you can easily buy a 16 port switch that supports VLANs for about 60 bucks. And you can have, you know, say two ports per board, a WAN and a LAN, and you can do pretty comprehensive testing on, you know, seven more boards. So. So this is what it took to add support for this board. I strategically picked one that was a Qualcomm based board that already had good support, but basically I had to figure out uh, Basically, where to load the kernel was, was the main thing. There's a few other things I had to add support for, like this board in particular had a broken U-boot. Uh, TFTP didn't work on the WAN port, so I had to have some workarounds for that. But um, it's pretty simple to add boards because there's a lot of framework in place in the code to you know, support U-boot stuff, so to 
support copying a file from your local machine to the WAN machine, and, have, and then since it sets up the TFTP server, it can load images. So it kind of handles all that in the background for you. And this, this is an example of the, the send and expect type of workflow that the tests use. So to create a test, you have to create a class. It inherits, they typically inherit from this root, this root test. Um, you implement the one function called run test, and you have access to all these devices, board, WAN, LAN, should be pointing up here, board, WAN, LAN, WLAN, and you basically do send and expect. So this is an uh, example test where I want to run iperf server on the WAN side, and I'll run iperf clients on all of the uh, uh, image virtual machines running on the LAN ports. So. The first part is getting, or uh, runs iperf, it's in line. Um, then it's iterating through all the devices dynamically that are attached to this that have the name LAN in it. Um, this is sort of cryptic Python, maybe I shouldn't have used that in the example, but. Um, and then I run the test in the second for loop, it's in line, iperf connect to the server. All the tests will, and the expect line will either have this line and it, it connected and it's running or it'll time out. So you can print a print an error message. Uh, at the end, we uh, we wait for all of them to finish, and then we clean up. So WAN Control C kills the server, and then the test is done. So I think with that, I want to switch to some of the live stuff. Let's see if I can do this. One. So this is. Oh, let me show you. The, my screen's like tiny. <laughs> the resolution went up. So this is an example. This is an example of how you'd invoke the test tool. BFT, the name of a station. You can actually specify a type of board as well, so it can connect to boards across your whole network if you have multiples. Uh, a kernel parameter that has a, a link to an image you want to load, and then by default it runs the flash-only test suite. But there's the notion of test suites as well. The stash e is a command line way to say I want to pin this test to my test suite, so it'll run at the end. So We'll kick this off, and you can see it, this is actually running, connected to my home in Texas, running, uh, remote controlling all these devices, so. And uh, it gives a lot of information. I won't go into it too much. Uh, feel free to talk to me about it afterwards as well, but uh, it's colorized, so you can see the cyan color is the WAN machine, so you can see it's setting up all the apparatus you need to, to for your router to be tested, so it's setting up uh, IP tables, installing pack, making sure you have packages installed, setting up TFTP server, a DHCP server, um, and then you switch over to the LAN side to do some configuration there. Um, same same idea, and then finally we get to the board. So we've we've actually in this in between here we've power cycled the board, and U boot comes up. We will interrupt it, and we will. For people who are familiar with it, we familiar with U-boot, we will, you know, load the image from the TFTP server and flash. So um, that'll take a little bit longer to finish. We'll just let it go in the background. But uh, so, is there any questions at this point? No questions. Um, so one of the things, one of the ways it can actually, so there's several ways. It generates a report HTML file. You can email. It uploads data to, to Kibana. It optionally uploads data to Kibana. So what it ends up doing, it ends up exporting, for every test you run, it, it exports these key value pairs of the type of board, who did it, uh, the tests that ran, if they pass or failed. And for like an iperf test, it'll actually do you know performance numbers like CPU usage and throughput numbers. So you can actually build pretty interesting uh, set of data from your from your from your test run. So this is actually the the purple board farm instantiation of this. But um, you can see you can see what you what you're basically exporting and. The, this is just the raw data, so it's not terribly useful, but you can go and create these uh, these dashboards, and I have one. It's probably easier if I look here. So 
So these are two boards that are, these are the two types of boards that are in the purple board form right now, AP135 and DB120. And you can see these are, this is a aggregation of all the, all the test runs. So you can see on, in all the runs we have, all the board types that we have information for, and there are other filters you can apply to this obviously, but uh, these are the two types. And I can actually drill down and click, click on one of them and then it, it removes all the other boards. So now I can see iperf IPv4 rate over time for these images on this board. And I can see you know, if you have regressions from day to day, uh, if you're using this internally to track performance, for example. So that's Kavana. Um, another cool thing, it's, it's really easy to, to set this up to do automated, uh, the build side is pretty well defined. People know how to type, make, and build open WRT, but uh, you can actually run in an automated fashion. Whenever there's changes pushed to a repository, you can do the build and then run the test. So it looks something like this. This is to build, this is to build a open WRT and and then we save, you know, the, the artifact, and you can do this in cron or scripts or whatever as well. We trigger another project, which is the actual one that will invoke the test, and it looks something as simple as this, is here's my configuration for my site, and here's the commands, and it will basically, on every build, every time something's pushed to uh, a repository, so for example, Last, yesterday at two, there was some changes in the Git repository, so we did a build. That build ended up triggering this test, and we have the results for it, so it's kind of cool. So here you can see what we saw on the console. Uh, same idea. Right. So let's go back to the test. So this guy finished. Um, so the rootfs boot test does a lot of interesting kind of setup. So we won't go into that too much, but this is what a test run looks like. Uh, you can see it talking to the WAN and the LAN. It starts an iperf server. The client connects. It waits for it to finish, and it parses the information. And it'll, this black part is actually the test suite spinning out information. So we saw that number. And that number is what we uploaded. To, we could upload to Kibana to create the graphs, et cetera. Um, I think that's about it on the tool side. So one, one of the big things, I, big questions I have is, is I have this setup now that's running, uh, doing the builds and running a t the image on a router. What do I do with that? Like, do I have it send emails to an open list? Do I start a conversation when I see it fails? How do you track it? And like, if you aggregate everyone's uh, boards and their, their own stations, how do you, how do you, do you automatically, for example, do you automatically open up a bug report if you have a, fail, uh, a failed run or that's something to talk about? So, um, I think, oh yeah, so another idea for cheap wireless testing is to, you know, get a Arduino Union you had for maybe last year <laughs> and have that be the wireless client that your test framework connects to and then it, it's driving itself as a client that connects to your router so you can do Wi-Fi validation. And some of that's some of that works. It's not perfect, but all right. I'm going to let Eric talk about the purple side of things. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm I'm up here because uh, purple. We run an instance of Board Farm through per, uh, Purple WRT Group, um, which I've talked about a little bit in detail. But uh, we are um, trying to. Uh, develop a public solution to the problem that exists. There's no automated testing of open WRT and lead changes on real hardware. Um, I know that, that uh, QCA was, was doing it, but um, there were no uh, public, um, a, a public solution that was generally used as far as I know. Um, so we have started uh, doing this on a few pieces of hardware. Um, we have three pieces of hardware that, that we have. Um, we're going, we have three more on the way for uh, different types of hardware. Um, so we, we do pretty much um, um, you know, what, what was talked about, um, what Matthew talked about, and we uh, run it through Jenkins. We run a build every day. Um, right now we use Raspberry Pis instead of uh, um, VMs. I think we should move to VMs, but it just hasn't been, haven't really had the time to do so. Um, Jenkins uh, actually SSHs into a private network where we host the boards. Um, we run the board farm tests and receive the results. Uh, you can actually view these results at, uh, at Jenkins. 
purplefoundation.org. Uh, some of the scripts available we have for recreating it are at Purple Foundation GitHub, um, and we encourage people to, uh, to check that out and to reuse it and improve upon it. Um, I do want to mention some of the things we do want to add. Uh, one, of the, one of the things we want to add is, is wireless testing. We don't do wireless testing. Uh, there are some legal issues with transmitting um, uh, using a Wi-Fi if we don't entirely know that it actually is going to work. There are some legal issues with preventing it from uh, transmitting in ways that are potentially illegal. So we have to try to work th those out. Uh, Paul Blay from uh, Imagination Technologies actually uh, is, has a prototype for uh, testing, um, testing Wi-Fi uh, via uh, using, using cables to, uh, instead of a regular antenna, which, which should reduce that to a minimal amount of transmission. Uh, we're also looking at, uh, we'd like at some point to ha make these uh, boards remotely accessible. So if someone in the community has an idea for a particular uh, image that they, that they want to test, they want to test on a particular board, they could SSH in and get access to it. There are issues with security and things that have to be considered, so we haven't uh, made that generally accessible, but that is a goal at some point to do. Um, so the big thing I do want to talk about is uh, how to get involved. Um, Oh, I should also mention we do want to work with uh, with the open WRT and lead communities on uh, on, on testing pull requests. Um, right now, we also uh, we run run our own builds. That was just uh, we did that immediately, but it'd be nice to get the builds uh, directly from from lead uh, build build servers and from the open WRT build servers, so we don't have to rebuild them. There's no really no point in doing that, I don't think. Um, and then just run those on actual hardware and then report back the results uh, publicly. Um, so how to get involved, you can certainly go to the QCA board farm, which is, which is where the main repository is for the code. Uh, you can donate a device, whether it be from a company that you, um, you are a part of, you don't have to be a member of Purple, or it's just a device that you have extra that you would like to have added to this. We, we very much welcome it. Um, to find out how to do that, you can email me. Um, we have a discussion list for Board Farm. It's uh, boardfarm at uh, list.purplefoundation.org. Um, it's a mailman instance, so you can, you can add yourself uh, that way. Uh, we also have an IRC channel, uh, Board Farm. It's not been super active, but we, we'd like to make it more active. So if people are interested in, uh, in discussing uh, how they're using Board Farm and, or, would, or th ideas, uh, please, please join that. Uh, and uh, at the Purple WRT Weekly Means, we have a, um, a standing uh, topic that we just discussed, Board Farm. Um, sometimes we talk for a long time about Board Farm. Sometimes it's just, hey, I haven't done a whole lot this week, and nobody, we don't, we're done in like 30 seconds. Um, but if, if people are willing or interested in, in discussing it and interested in learning more about it, I, I think we can certainly expand that topic as necessary. Um, and you're welcome to join that, uh, whether you are involved in Purple in general or you're just a community member, uh, everybody are, is welcome to those meetings. So I guess uh, questions for Matthew or I? Could someone run the microphone back? I don't have so much of a question. I just have a recommendation. We mm -hmm. kind of, uh, we've done more or less the same thing in our implementation. And uh, when we started ramping up nodes, uh, virtual machines started getting heavy. So we used network namespaces instead, and that makes us ramp up much more, and we can have much, much bigger load and much more uh, amount of nodes. So that's just a recommendation from us. Okay, that's that's a great idea. Thank you. There's really no constraints on the devices that drive the test. You just have to have a way to bring them up. So. Any other questions? No? no? Okay. Well, thank you both. Thank you very much. Sweet.